on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a good God. God is a good God and he's still in control. Amen. So glad to see all of you out this evening. Amen. Amen. We want to jump right into into this lesson because it's a lot. We have fewer verses than we had last week, but it's a lot of information we want to jump into tonight. A lot of references to revelations or in the revelation that we want to go back and pull these references out. You have to understand the Bible doesn't contradict itself. And so many folks will say, well, the Bible contradicts itself. The Bible makes reference to itself. Something can be said a thousand to fifteen hundred years before it comes to pass. But as the word says, you know that it's a true prophet of God. If what they say or what they prophesy come to pass. Amen. Amen. And you'll know that God said it. So what we want to look at tonight, we want to look at these things in these last eight verses and some of the things we're going to pull back from your from your or to your remembrance that that was we've already gone over. Or you've already read, but it's being shown here in Revelation and it solidifies the word of God. The Bible says out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. So we see in the Bible that they're going to see, we're going to find places where it said two or three times to confirm that it is of God. Amen. So let's get on into it. Let's get on into it. We, we started out in chapter seven last week and we talked about how, how God is, is, is going to be a break between the sixth seal and the seventh seal. And God is going to have the angels, four angels at, at the four corners of the earth to hold back the winds until the, the um, foreheads of, of his servants are sealed. And he's going to choose 144,000 out of the house of Israel to seal the saints. And this is during the tribulation time. But God is going to be so merciful and so gracious that he's going to take a break in order for those who didn't get saved the first time. will have a still have a chance to get saved the next time. A amen. Ain't God's grace so good? To a amen. I, I thank him for it every day. A a amen. Amen. And, and John and John says he, he, he saw this happening and he said, and then he saw a number, a great number, a number that no man could count of these saints up there. And they were dressed in white robes and and, and they were arrayed in white robes and they had palms in their hand. And we talked about what those symbolized. And and then this brings us up to verse number 10 here in chapter seven. And and cried with a loud voice, these this great multitude cried with a loud cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. John saw the great multitude, which no man can number, crying out into the Lord, unto the Lord with a loud voice. They were standing before the throne. They were standing before the throne of God crying out and they were saying salvation to our God. And salvation is the theme of their worship. They're glad to be saved. <laughs> they're glad. See, they're glad to be saved now. They're worshiping God now. They're glad to be saved now because they recognize that there is a God and they need to accept Jesus Christ. These are the ones that would walk around and say that I ain't got to go to church. These are the ones that say I ain't got, I don't need Jesus. I don't, I don't need grace and all of this. They thought that they can make it in on their own if they thought that they can make it in. But they found out that the only way they can make it in is that God had to be on their side. Are y'all, y'all, y'all with me? Amen. Because we have to understand we can't save ourselves. 
We cannot save ourselves. Amen. Some think that their works and how well they follow the rules will get them in. Pharisees and scribes taught that you got to follow the letter of the law and then you will receive righteousness. But we cannot obtain the righteousness of God by doing things on our own. Amen. Because all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. Amen. It's only by the grace of God that we can be saved. Are y'all are y'all with me? Amen. Paul says in Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Our salvation is a free gift through grace. You can't barter for it. You can't bargain about it. You can't buy it. You can't work for it. It is a gift. It is free of charge. All you got to do is have faith in it. Ain't God good. A a amen. Jesus deserves all the credit. That's why all those jokers up there now say, Lord, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you for what you did on Calvary's here. They did not accept it the first time. But when God gave them another chance, well, I'm so glad we serve a God of another chance. We might have to go through hell before we get that next chance. But when that next chance comes, I bet you we'll take it the next time. Amen. So now this Jesus deserves all the credit. He purchased our salvation with his precious blood. We must praise and worship Jesus for he alone deserves all the credit. If Jesus would not have gone to Calvary's Hill and shed his precious blood, we'd still be in a mess. Amen. All of us would still be on our way to hell. Amen. John heard them give credit to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb. And it sounds like they were trying to separate God and the lamb. Because they were talking about God that sits on the throne and the lamb. But remember the vision that John saw, Jesus was on the right hand and God was sitting on the throne. But in certain instances, John is going to look and Jesus will be in the midst of the throne <laughs> or in front of the throne. He'll be somewhere around the throne. There's no way that he could separate <laughs> God from the lamb because God and the lamb are one in the same. Jesus told his disciples when he asked him, um, Jesus, master, show us the father. He said, I've been with you so long that you don't know. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. I and my father are as, amen. We're going to get down here and prove some more of that right here. A amen. Amen. So there they, they, they see that it, they were not giving praise to two separate entities, but unto one God. Only one, only one God. The first which sitteth upon the throne is the one who authored and created the plan of salvation. And the lamb is he who offered himself up to redeem mankind. Both God and the Lamb are authors of salvation. John gives us clarity about God and the Lamb. In John 1 and 1 through 3, when he said, 1 through the third verse, when he said, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. But watch this. And the Word was God. Which means that both of them are the same. What is what he said in verse two? And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Okay, now watch this. All things were made by the word. That's what he said. He's proving that Jesus is God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. But I go back to Genesis in that first verse and it tells me in the beginning. God created the heaven and earth. But here John tells me in John 1 that Jesus created everything. Everything was made by him and without him nothing was made. 
So if I go to Genesis and tie it into John, when it said God created the heaven and the earth, then John says that Jesus or the word created everything. I got to put it together and say that God is Jesus and Jesus is God. You cannot separate them. You cannot separate them. Are y'all still with me? A a amen. Amen. So now he said they cried with a loud voice, salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Do not think that they were praising both of them. They were praising only one God. Are y'all with me? They were praising only one God. Look at verse 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. When they were, when, when, the, when the great multitude were worshiping and praising God, the angels who were around all of them, they were around the 20 and four elders, they were around the four beasts that are in, the four living creatures that are in front of the throne continuously, they were around the great multitude as they were praising God. They were worshiping as the great multitude was worshiping God. Are y'all following me? Now watch this. John saw all the angels around the throne. These are the same angels that the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands back in Revelations, that fifth chapter and that 11th verse. Now, you see, this is a continual movie that he's looking at. And I want to remind you, Revelations is not in chronological order because this right here is the end of everything. This is when Jesus is getting ready to come back. This is happening before Jesus is getting ready to come back. But we're going to read later on in Revelation where it's going to back up and fill in some stuff. Are, are y'all with me? A amen. Amen. So now, so now he said, now this, this is the number the, these angels right here, they were around the 24 elders and the four living creatures that he saw first in Revelation chapter four, when the door to heaven first was open and he saw these around the throne. Are y'all with me? And all of those heavenly beings along with the great multitude worship the one who sat on the throne and the lamb at the right hand that John saw. They were in total adoration and worship of God for who he is and all that he has done. They were making noise in heaven. And I'm going back a few weeks ago and I'm telling you, how can folks want to sit there solemn in church Hearing the word of God, knowing what God has done, knowing who God is, how can you sit there quiet without saying something and expect to go to a place where there's noise all the time? I, I, I don't understand it. I, I don't understand. And see, and even if nobody else want to say anything, when I think about the goodness of Jesus... And all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. And if it's on the inside of me, what's on the inside of me won't let me hold my peace. Amen. Won't let me hold my peace. Let's, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. They're around, they're around the throne. They're worshiping God. And you see all of them worshiping God. Now watch verse 12. Saying, Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Now, the ones who are saying amen, the ones who are saying amen, and when they say amen, they mean so be it. They were affirming and in agreement with what the great multitude was saying. 
it was almost like the great multitude was preaching and the 24 elders and the four living creatures and the angels were saying amen to what they were saying because you got to remember what they were saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb and what they were saying salvation belonged to God and what these heavenly creatures were saying amen Boy, y'all better be with it. Amen. And it's just like us, just like us. When we affirm, when that word come from up there or when that word come from down here or when the choir is singing a song that we, we know is true, what do we say? Amen. Amen. We give witness and we're in agreement with the truth. A -a Amen. Amen. John then heard them saying blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. If you would count those, those, those characteristics or attributes, you will find that there are seven of them. This is a sevenfold blessing. This is a sevenfold blessing. These are spiritually complete blessings spoken by the heavenly host around the throne of God, which means that their praise and worship is complete. Everything about God's power is complete. Yes, is. The same ascription, the same ascription of praise was given, to, given by them, the same ones in Revelation 5 and 12. They were saying the same thing. When the lamb received the scroll from the right hand of God because he was the only one worthy to get the book. The same thing happened in chapter five. The praise was for the lamb. But here in chapter seven, the praise is to God on the throne. They were praising the same God. That time they were praising the lamb in chapter five for receiving the book or the scroll here they're praising God. They're praising God for sitting on the throne. In both instances, the worship is described as rendered in heaven. And the use of the language shows that God and the lamb are regarded in heaven as entitled to equal praise. And if they receive equal praise, we understand God say, I will share my glory with nobody else. So if they're praising in heaven, God and the lamb has to be the same one because everything in heaven happens in order. <laughs> there is no chaos. There is no confusion. There is no misunderstanding. If they praise in heaven, all of it's to God. Woo, all of us to God. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Paul says in Philippians, that second chapter, the 6th through 11th verse, let me read that for you. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. This here, Paul is describing how God took on the form of a servant, wrapped himself in flesh, and came out with the likeness of men. <laughs> Notice now God made man in his likeness. But now Jesus came down as God and got in the likeness of men. Oh, y'all come on. <laughs> now watch this. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul here is saying that God himself came down, wrapped himself up in flesh, and then presented himself as a servant. God, 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 God's bad now. God, God is awesome. God, God, God is bad now. Because only God can reconcile us back to God. 
When he called himself the, the son of man, that was an expression of humility. Jesus could have easily say, I'm God still. Or I'm, I'm the son of God, but yet he said, I'm the son of man. I came here to serve you. <laughs> yeah, when we're looking at salvation, when we're looking at salvation, and I've, I've explained this, this before. If in the New Testament, God had to reconcile man back to himself. In the Old Testament, he did the same thing. With Adam, he did the same thing. Adam could not reconcile himself back to God when he messed up in the garden. Because the Bible says the voice of the Lord walked in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where are you? Why did he ask Adam that? Because there was a separation. But there needed to be reconciliation. Adam had nobody else who can bring him back together with God. So the only one that can bring Adam back to God had to be God. So what did God do? God had told him the day you sin, you will surely die. So in order, in order to get a substitute, God had to kill an innocent animal, shed his blood, got the skin from the animal and wrapped it around Adam. In other words, saying, boy, you sinned, you messed up, but I'm going to bring you back to me and let the blood cover you and I got you covered. So if God reconciled Adam back to him, Jesus reconciled man back with God. Only God can reconcile man back to himself. Are y'all still with me? So the general idea, the general idea that the highest kind of praise is to be ascribed to God and the Lamb, everything excellent in character is to be attributed to them or to God. Every blessing which is received is to be traced back to God. All good and perfect gifts come from above. Amen. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. You're talking about that man named Jesus who is God. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. So look on. Let's go on. Let's go on a little bit further. Let's go on to verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these? which are arrayed in white robes. And whence came they? Y'all read that too fast. <laughs> read it again. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Y'all still read, y'all reading it too fast. Let, let, me, let me slow it down for y'all, okay? And one of the elders answered, uh -huh. saying unto me, this is John, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Okay, since y'all can't figure it out, let me help y'all. One of the elders spoke to John, and they answered him. They answered him. I ain't the brightest light on the Christmas tree. But I, but I do have a little flicker every now and then. If somebody answer you, don't they answer you when you ask them a question? Yes. 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 But in reading all of this in chapter 7 and went back in chapter 6, I didn't see John ask a question. So how can he answer when a question wasn't even asked? <laughs> <laughs> Some, sometimes sometimes when I, I say something just like some of you now when I'm asking these questions right here you, you're looking at me with that Scooby Doo look <laughs> <laughs> and see and you hadn't said a word but an old song old R&B song you say it's written all over your face <laughs> You don't have to say a word. See that y'all like y'all ain't been saying that long. Don't trip. Don't 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 trip. Amen. 
Sometimes, sometimes there's an understanding that you asking a question just by how you look. But you got to understand these are heavenly beings that has the gift of discernment and they understand your curiosity. So John was curious and he wasn't answering the he wasn't asked the question with his mouth, but he was asking the question in his mind. He was asking the question in his mind. And the question that he asked was, what are these? What are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came, whence came they? Let me, let me go ahead and go through my notes. Let me go ahead and go through my notes. John had a desire to know and the heavenly being understood his desire. And he began to answer John by asking him two questions that John desired to know. The first question was, who are these who are adorned in white robes? The second question was, well, now where did they come from? <laughs> See, because the questions were asked in order to answer John's curiosity to give him clarity. Because John had already seen a lot of groups in heaven. Are y'all, he had already seen a lot, a lot of groups of people. John had seen uh, a few groups in his vision so far. John had, he had seen the, the souls of them underneath the altar that told God, God avenge us. When are you going to avenge us for them killing us that looked like they had been sacrificed? And God said, I'm going to do it in my time. Go ahead and give them some white robes. That wasn't the group. And then he, John, then, then he, he, he saw the, the 144,000 and they were, they were, who were sealed in their foreheads. And, 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 you know, and so who are these that are standing in front of the throne now? This great multitude dressed in white. Who are these? Now, when we compare, let's go back and compare. Daniel and Ezekiel also had similar visions when heaven was open. When heaven, at certain times, God showed certain ones things in heaven. Now look at Daniel, and we're going to compare what Daniel saw to the things that we're reading here. Look at Daniel 12. Daniel 12, the first four verses says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. Everyone that should be found written in. The, this is the rapture. This is the rapture. Are, are, are y'all with me? And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some, shame, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now watch this. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. These are the ones that are taken in the first go round. Now watch this. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. They that turn many or the multitude to righteousness or to Jesus. This is describing the 144,000 with the stamp or the seal of God in their forehead that has turned this great multitude to Jesus. Are y'all seeing this? This is not revelation. This is in Daniel. Uh, this is in Daniel. Now watch this. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Boy, I wish y'all were with me. Oh, I wish y'all were following me. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Now watch this. There's no question that this vision of Daniel is the same time as what we've been reading in Revelations now. Because this is what God says in, Revel in Daniel 12 and 9, in that same chapter. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. <sighs> let me, 
Oh, okay. come on, come on, come with me, come with me. This is God talking to Daniel, or his angel talking to Daniel, telling him that I've shown you this, and now whatever's written in this book, it is now closed and sealed until the end. <sighs> now John saw a great angel flying around, a strong angel saying, who is worthy to open the book? This is the end time that's being revealed to John. Nobody answered until the elders said, don't worry, the lamb is worthy. Now when the lamb received the book, what did he start doing? He started opening seals. This is the book that Daniel saw being closed. And now that it's the end, the, ain't, uh, the lamb is now getting the book and unsealing it. <laughs> is this too much for y'all? <laughs> is, is this too much for y'all? I told y'all from the beginning, we're going to tie stuff together to show that the Bible is fulfilling itself. Oh boy. Lord have mercy. Oh boy. The elder asked John two questions. Okay, let's get back to this right here because I done flew over y'all heads now. Okay. The elder asked John two questions. He said, Now who are those people? Who are those with the white robes? The great multitude. Who are they? And then John, where'd they come from? Are y'all y'all with me? So so let's let's look at let's find this out. Let's look at let's look at verse 14. And I said unto him, John said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are they that came out of great tribulation. And wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Are, are y'all are y'all with me? John responded to the question asked by the elder, saying, "Sir, thou knowest." Does that sound familiar? Does that sound? The Bible tells us in Ezekiel thirty-seven, the prophet the prophet said that the hand of the Lord was upon me, and the Spirit of the Lord took me up and carried me into a valley, set me down in a valley, and the valley was full of bones, and the bones were very dry, and caused me to pass round about them. And then God said, son of man, <laughs> can these bones live? And because Ezekiel didn't know the answer, Ezekiel said, Lord God, <laughs> you know, <laughs> amen, are, are y'all with me? All wisdom and knowledge belong to God. And we just like John, we got to know and realize that there are some things that only God can answer. The elder tells him that these are they which came out of great tribulation. See now, when, when, when John wrote, the, or when King James translated this, in the Greek it said, these are they which came out of the great tribulation. Mm. Talking about that seven year period of tribulation. But King James interpretation said, these are they which came out of great tribulation. In other words, the elder knew the one standing before the throne, worshiping and praising God in the white robes and the palms are those who have come through much affliction and persecution. And they are believed to be the ones who didn't go with the rapture church since they were not saved yet. And during the seven year period, they will be saved, martyred, and enter into heaven. During this seven year period, the 140, the 144,000 chosen ones, the sealed ones of God, will spread the gospel throughout the earth before that seventh seal is opened up. And these are the ones who receive the gospel for the last time. 
Woo! I want to be on the first boat. That's right. I want to be on the. I want to be on the first boat leaving out. A -a Amen. These are the ones that John saw. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 12, verses 12 through 14. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then, and then shall the end come. When this 144,000 spread the gospel all over the world, then Jesus coming back. There are places now that the gospel has not been preached, so we know that the end is not yet. But when that gospel is spread all over the world and every creature will have the opportunity to hear about this man named Jesus, then the end will come and Jesus coming back. Jesus is coming back, not as a servant, but he's coming back as the king of kings. Amen. They are coming out of great tribulation. Watch this. Watch this. one. They're coming out of great tribulation. But the Bible says here that they're dressed in white garments. They're coming out of tribulation, but they're dressed in white garments. They're coming out of great tribulation. They're struck, but they're dressed in white. <laughs> in other words, they don't look like what they've been through. Boy, y'all, there you go. They, they, they have been through affliction, torment, trouble, tribulation, persecution, problems, pain, all of these things. But yet they stand before the throne of God in garments white as snow. John first saw the ones under the altar that looked like they had been sacrificed. They were all stained and messed up and stuff. And then God said, clean them up and put on white robe. But here, these appeared in white robes. Boy, yeah, yeah. they appeared in white robes. And why were their robes so white? Because they washed them. Not in tide. Not, not in gain. Not in arm and hammer. They didn't dip them in bleach. But they washed them in the blood of the lamb because only the blood of Jesus can clear away all of our sins what can wash my, my sins away nothing but the blood That's why their robes are so clean because they used the best detergent that was ever created and that was the blood of Jesus. All of the stains that I ever committed, nobody else, nothing else could take them away but when Jesus dipped them in his blood. Those who came out of great tribulation found the forgiveness and the spiritual power which gave them confidence and hope in the midst of life's war and life's weariness in the blood of the lamb. And because they are thankful to God for his love and his mercy and his grace, look at what they did. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. Therefore, the elders telling them, therefore they are, they, therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. The elder continued to tell John, give them, they explain their story and tell them who they are and where they came from. These will remain before the throne which is God's heavenly temple. These will remain before the throne, 
continually serving him with praise and worship. They will be with God all the time. Praising and worshiping him. See, so, see so, 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 some of us better be careful how, how, how we, we look at our watches sometime when God is working and, and, and it's getting close to 12 o'clock. I understand the foolishness going on. But if the spirit is high and the Lord is in the building, you better shut your mouth and join in with everybody else. Boy, they will be serving him day and night, all the time. Day and night means without ceasing or without taking a break. Oh, boy. See, and we can't compare our glorified bodies to our natural bodies because every now and then we get tired. We have to we have to rest. We have to get some sleep. We have to eat. We got to go to the bathroom. All of this stuff. But in our glorified bodies. Y'all yeah. hey, don't, don't get shame on me now. But in our glorified bodies. We don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, are y'all are y'all with me? A -a Amen. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. In other words, God's glorious and gracious presence shall dwell with his glorified saints for eternity. Woo. Let's jump to chapter 21. And that third verse says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The dwelling place of God is is with men God is dwelling among them he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God whoo boy whoo look, look, look it went a little further look at verse 16 it went a little further they shall hunger no more Neither thirst no more, neither shall the sunlight on them, nor any heat. The prophet Isaiah said, the prophet Isaiah, this is Isaiah 49 and 10. They shall not hunger, nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Now this is going to get into that, getting into that 17th verse. Look at what Revelations 21 and verse 23 says. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it and the lamb is the light thereof. Amen. It didn't have two places with light. The light was coming from God. God is the lamb. So they were, the, they, since God was being glorified, his light lit up that new city of Jerusalem. The sun was no more. There was no more moon because God lit up the place. There was no night. Some people ask, well, when, 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 when we going to have time to sleep? You ain't going to sleep. Your glorified body will not need rest. Yes. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, boy. There'll be no more famine. There'll be no more drought. No more pestilence. There will not be any sun to harm the saints in any way. We ain't got to worry about getting tanned. Or sunburn. <laughs> Our glorified bodies will be sustained by God, and the light in that city will be provided by the glory of God and the Lamb. See, look at the next verse, what it says, verse 17, this last verse. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne. Now, watch this the Lamb that is in the midst of the throne. Now, notice the Lamb has moved from the right hand, and now he's in the midst of the throne. <laughs> 
because the lamb and he that sit on the throne are the same one. The lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Woo. Okay, I got a couple of minutes to go over this one right here. Yeah, I got a few minutes to go over this one right here. God's son, now watch this. God's son is both a lamb and a shepherd. <laughs> God's son is both a lamb and a shepherd. See, and folks want to know how can it be God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost? He is I am. Whatever you need me to be at the time you need me. <laughs> I am. If you need for me to be your father, I am. If you need for me to be your brother, I am. If you need for me to dwell inside of you, I am. Don't think with your natural mind. You have to think with your spiritual mind. Let that mind be in you. That was also... In Christ Jesus, he, he is both a lamb and a shepherd. Watch this. Jesus is identified as a shepherd on occasion in the Bible. Look at David in Psalm, in Psalm 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He's identified as a shepherd in Isaiah 49 and 10. He identifies himself as a shepherd in John 10 and 14 when he said that I am the good shepherd. And my sheep know, I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. A -a Amen. Amen. He, he's a, he described as a shepherd in Hebrews 13 and 20. See, now this scene in which John is seeing is definitely in heaven. Definitely in heaven where there is eternal peace and joy. When he said, notice what he said. He said, he shall feed them. Now, that's to say that Jesus will care for his saints, the great multitude, as a shepherd care for his sheep. See, some 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 ask the question, maybe, are we going to be eating up there? How it's described we are, because when it's described that new city of Jerusalem, it talks about the tree that bears its fruit in season. And there are 12 different fruit that 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 grows on these trees. So why would there be fruit if we're not going to partake of it? Okay, I got something else for you. That's not, that's not the only thing. I got something else for you. A -a Amen. He'll feed you like the great multitude as a shepherd cared for a sheep. He will feed us in person. And with the rich, he'll feed us by the rich discoveries of himself and of his love signified by a feast by new wine in his father's kingdom. Remember, Jesus told his disciples at the Last Supper in Matthew 26 and 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Jesus was talking about then I ain't going to drink no more wine. Until you get with me in heaven and then we'll drink it. I ain't say that. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. When it said, when it said the fruit of the vine, it's, talking about, it's not about wine. He said, I will, I will not drink anymore until we drink it new or get a fresh start in my father's kingdom talking about heaven. Oh boy, y'all still y'all ain't like y'all did get. Hey, amen. He's gonna feed us. The next thing, he shall lead them unto living fountains of water. That's to say that he'll lead us to flowing streams, which symbolizes the grace, love, and free favor of God in Christ. The illusion of this stream or the streams is undoubtedly to um 
in line or connected with the happiness that will be found in heaven. Can you just imagine being happy all the time? See, see, Sonia, I can't, not yet. Because as long as long as I got other folk around me, I can't, I can't just I can't imagine being happy all the time. See, that's some of y'all acting so safe. Y'all, y'all, y'all know, y'all, y'all know that it's like, it, it, you know, it's, it's like some people are assigned to rub you the wrong way. When you feel, when you feel like everything going good and hunky dory, here they come. Upset your apple cart. It's some some going on. You you can be happy, going, and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm thinking my back right here. Oh, something happened and mess you up. Somebody called you with some bad news. I don't know how it feels to be happy all the time without a care in the world. If y'all know how to do it, y'all need to tell me and write the book. I ain't there yet. I still know what the book says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. Yeah, yeah that means when it comes up, he deliver me, but here comes something else. <laughs> Please ask these 12, tell me as long as I live on this earth, things going to start and it ain't going to get no better. We're going to go down here. Talking about the peoples and the grinders and the keeper of the house. We, the, the older we get, the more we going to tear down. At, at 20, from 20 to 30, boy, I can jump, I can jump up out the bed. Lord, thank you. I just jump up out the bed. From 30 to 40, I, I can roll over and stand up pretty good. But between 50, but between 50 now and 60, boy, I can just roll down and just get right on my knees. I ain't gonna even try. I ain't gonna try my back. I ain't gonna try my knees. Just roll out of bed and get on my knees. Lord, I thank you for just waking me up. It's almost like you want to say, Lord, I don't know how it's gonna feel when I stand up, but thank you for waking me up. Amen. This old building keep on leaning. I don't know how it feels to be happy all the time. So these people walking around with this Joel Osteen spirit, y'all lying. A Amen. He said, living fountains of waters. Living fountain. Here it must refer to the fact that the happiness will be perennial. Perennial is a $2 word with a $20 meaning. And then flip that thing. It's a $2 word with a $20 meaning. This, this, this happiness will be perennial, which means that it will be continuous. We'll be happy all the time. Filled with the joy of the Lord all the time. Hey, hey, amen. This, we will have this. It will be infinite. It will be infinite. The joy and the happiness that we have in heaven will be infinite. And then it says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All tears from their eyes. See, this is to say that all sorrow will be removed from everybody. No tears shall gather in any eye for the sources of sorrow will be cut off in the land where there is no more sin. Hallelujah. Where the, where, where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary Shall be a yeah, boy. Somebody know that song. A a amen. Amen. The, so the songwriter said in heaven alone, no sin is found and there is no weeping there. There you go, mother. You're the only one know that hymn. A amen. Amen. Because sin brings about sorrow. None can weep again 
when it is God who wipe away their tears. If God wipes away my tears, I've cried my last tear yesterday. When, when God wipes away my tear, I, I don't need mama to wipe it away. I don't need mother. I don't need anybody else to wipe away. When God wipes it away, it ain't going to come back. No, I ain't going to cry. No. It's reiterated in Revelations 21. Then I'm done. 21. And um, verse number four, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things. Are passed away, passed away. Amen. And we'll start on chapter eight next week with the opening of that seventh seal. Amen. Any questions, comments?